Okay, hi, welcome back. Today is another one of those really exciting days where I come to you unboxing a fun little thing. You guys would have seen in the thumbnail already, but I got the Nightmare Before Christmas collection. Oh my God, yes, I'm so excited. There's a ton of stuff on my face right now. I go through the whole collection, not the whole collection. I go through the eye collection, including the glitter, the eyeshadow palette, the eyeliner, um, the little jelly much shadows. I do a swatches, first impressions, a deep dive, and then I also do two looks and put this whole face on. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, friends. Hello. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to do that thing again where I come to you <laughs> 6 p.m. after work, after meeting, looking like crap. Let me put on some concealer at least because I've got red all over my face. Um, this is eyeshadow, by the way, that has been on since 5 am and honestly it's it's doing pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. It is the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette and um, She's actually, she's shown them that she's worth some salt, you know, she's she's here, still looking pretty good. The color on my face is Moon Magic, if you guys were wondering. Um, let me just get myself together a little bit before I hop on camera to hundreds of people. Oh my god. Okay, hi. <laughs> We've started again. I have, have I zhuzhed my hair up at all? I put a little bit of dry shampoo in. It's time to get started because I have the Nightmare Before Christmas collaboration. I have the palette. I have the Jelly Munch shadows. I got the little glitter and I have the two liners, which is really exciting. So these uh, in total, I think, comprise the eye set. It sounds like these six pieces are gonna make up the eye collection and I'm very, very excited for this. I wish they had dropped some really artistic, really avant-garde lashes some maybe um, Sally or Jack inspired lashes. I wish that maybe the little trio of terror thing was a little bit different, but I have not laid eyes on this yet except for the packaging and I lived vicariously through some other folks who had done um, the packaging extravaganza situation, but I just want to give you an up close look at everything. First of all, if no one has mentioned this yet or this is the first, uh, somehow this is the first review you're coming by, all of the packages in this collection are off kilter, so they're not completely square. So if you think about um, a regular square where things are level and even, all of the packaging here is um, trapezoidal, which is really interesting and really wacky and very chaotic, and I'm obsessed. But we've got first Scream Queen and Pumpkin King eyeliner. Super cute, yeah, with the lines and the colors and the line art, it is just adorable. Then we've got the Jack Skellington, what is this even called? Master of Fright Glitter Gel. So again, with this trapezoidal box and the glitters are raised. You've got different kinds of graphics here, adorable. And then we've got this Trio of Terror Jelly Much Shadow Collection. And you can see some of the pieces are glossy, some of it is matte, some of it's recessed, some of it has a glitter overcoat. And the glitter is coming off a little bit on my fingers, but it is I mean, this packaging is really hefty. I thought for sure that this was going to be very light. Um, but yeah, in sliding these out, I'm seeing now that they're actually pretty heavy, guys. They're not super light. Okay, and then last and certainly not least, we've got the eyeshadow palette. And this one feels really heavy for some reason. It feels much heavier than this guy. So I don't know if they've added a mirror in here. But let's open her up. So beautiful packaging as always. It's kind of like Sephora on Halloween steroids. It feels good. It feels like a really hefty one. It feels like this one might have a mirror in it. Yeah, mirror! Oh my god, I'm so excited. Why am I so excited for this thing to have a mirror? Um, and finally revealing this product. Yes, it is as beautiful as I thought it was going to be. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. So with all the little graphics, it's so cute. Um, here's the outside. And it does feel really luxe. It feels really quite nice. Oh, it's so cute. It's Christmas. It's Halloween. I love it. I love that they leaned into the Christmas theme because we had a lot of Halloween stuff with the Hocus Pocus and all that jazz. So really, really leaning into the Christmassy aesthetic. Sorry, I haven't even gotten to explaining why I was so excited for this release. I mean, you can probably assume why judging by my appearance, my aesthetic. Uh, does it surprise you that I was a child who was very into Nightmare Before Christmas? No, you know, basically everything that Lauren May Beauty said about um, being that kid wearing the Nightmare Before Christmas hoodie to school and having like the black eyeliner and being the emo kid, yes to all of that and I don't think anyone is surprised. You know what I mean? Like I don't think anyone is shocked, uh, concerned, bothered, calling their moms, saying, did you know this person that I was watching was secretly a closeted edgeoid as a child? I mean, very, very obvious, right? So shock, barrel, and what's the last one? Shock, barrel, and lock. Never remember their names. Um, I will say my Jelly Much Shadow uh, is dry. Mine is dry because it opened up in transit, I believe, which is not cool. Um, so unfortunately, lock, which is my favorite one, was dry. 
Uh, let's compare it to shock. I mean, it looks like it may have just gotten a little bit hard from being in such cold temperatures. It's around 36 degrees right now in Massachusetts, but my barrel has also come undone. So of the, of the three, uh, these two guys, lock and barrel, both came with the screw tops a little bit open. However, they are firm. I mean, they're from, uh, let's try, you know, I'm, I'm happy to just, uh, Give them a try, see how the quality is. I've never used a Jelly Munch Shadows. So I'm particularly excited about this. You know why they're hefty? It's because they're glass. These are made of glass and not plastic, which is great if we can recycle these. Yeah, which, which I don't think you should have any issues with it. But I heard these are fantastic products, and the one that I was most excited for looks like it has the least amount of product in it. So I don't know what that's about. I think maybe I should. I don't know. Let's figure this out. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, mine has dried out, I believe, because mine definitely feels like it's not really working. Oh, disappointing. Okay, I'll just call ColourPop, not call them, I'll email them just to let them know. But for now, I can definitely give this a swatch, and I can't talk about the texture of this particular one if the formulation is different in this one compared to the others, because mine is completely dried out and absolutely bogus. But I will just show you the color. I don't think it has sold out, as far as I know. And I definitely do have enough to do, like, a look on the eyes. Oh, that is beautiful. That is so stunning. <laughs> juicy, juicy, juicy. And these are some of those, um, pigments where I feel like the more you buff, the more the color shows. Do you remember those lipsticks um, where the more you buffed, the more the glitter showed up? And I feel like this is the same thing. Like the more you buff, the more uh, you get that base to be very, very even and very, very kind of spread out. And then you see that bright, brilliant blue reflect. It's kind of like a blue indigo. And I say indigo because in some lights directly, it's very clearly a sky blue pigment. But then as you shift ever so slightly, it turns more into like a red, I don't know, it's duochromatic for sure. It's duochrome in terms of the glitter. The base itself shifts from like gray to black. I'm obsessed with this and it um, it sets, which is brilliant. That's really quite nice. I didn't think that those would do that. All right, let's try the next one, which is Barrel. I think Barrel is the most wearable of the three and certainly very appealing to the masses, I would say. It's like a very typical duochrome green brown pigment. Again, you know what, maybe it's not, you know, yeah, definitely the other one I tried was dried up. Okay, that's disappointing. But let's try. Okay, so this is definitely much more wearable. It reminds me a little bit of like a MAC pigment. I don't know what MAC pigment I'm thinking about because I was never a really big MAC girl. I was too young at the time. But it's definitely a much thinner formula. So I'm feeling it on my fingers and it's not clinging in the way that this one is. Again, could be because my formula was dry, but you can definitely see the color. And I don't think the color is going to change much depending on... Um, dryness, but I'll go over with one more layer to see if we can build because I'm curious. I've never worked with these before. They feel beautiful. I honestly wish that they would release more of these single shadows. <gasps> Look at that. That is stunning. And they're very budge proof, which is another benefit that I hadn't foreseen that they would be so kind of like locked and loaded, you know? So that one as well, strong, strong duochrome between the copper and a blue and a little teal shift. It's just, it's very wearable. It's very pretty. All right, last one, not wearable. This is shock and it certainly is a shock of fuchsia. It's very, very bright. And I'm going to go on my index finger now, see if we have any. Yeah, so the first one definitely was dried up. This one is very moist. <laughs> is anyone triggered by that word, the M word? This one certainly has a lot more of that water content and it feels bouncier to the touch. So I'm I'm sorry I wasn't able to give a much more thorough review of the Jelly Mush Shadows just because I wasn't experienced with them. But from a first impression standpoint, you know, they're moussey, they're watery. Uh, this one feels much more straightforward. So if there were to be a shadow to skip, it would definitely be the fuchsia one in terms of uh, visual interest, I will say. It has the most interesting color, but it doesn't have any duochromatic, secret, hidden, shifty pieces um, because the other ones do. The other ones do have like something special. I don't want to say something special in a bad way. I mean, this one certainly has a micro shimmer. It's kind of like a silvery lilac micro shimmer, but it's so smooth and so even that it just looks like shine, you know? But again, with the formula, with the, I don't know, it like dries down really nice and budge proof and it layers well. I wonder if I could just layer that on top of here. I don't know. I like this. I'm trying to like play around to see. I'm wondering if you could use this as like an eyeliner because it feels very opaque. It feels very thick. Let me know. I mean, it really feels like by the time this has set, it's set and it's done. You know, it's not migrating anywhere. It's not going anywhere. I don't have anywhere to rub my hands um, to get rid of this stuff. That's problematic. I'm going to dig just out of curiosity because I've never used these before. I'm going to dig into a little liner brush and I'm going to try to see if I can line my eyes with this because it feels it feels like it would 
It would stay, it would set, and it wouldn't budge, and it would be beautiful all day. Oh, that being said, I picked a color that's not very, uh, not very dark or good for aligning the eyes. But okay, let's say I go over the eyes with this pink. I kind of create a wing shape. Could that stay? I mean, only time will tell. My little blackened pot, this one called uh, Lock. My little Lock guy is definitely dried out and he's not, um, he's not doing too hot. <gasps> but definitely would work really well as an eyeliner because it's dark enough and it certainly does layer on top of something else. Like it, it doesn't feel like it picks up on um, the last product that was there underneath. Like some eyeshadows, um, if you apply it underneath or on top of something else, it tends to pick up uh, whatever was underneath. And that does not look like it is happening here. It looks like it would be really nice and budge proof on the lower lash line. Okay, so, so far, even though two of the three came, um, not broken, but not in the most ideal of conditions, I feel like I am pretty confident in wanting a replacement even. I mean, sometimes you get a product and you're like, do I even wanna bother? Am I even gonna wanna use this? But this, I definitely feel like I wanna use. I wanna have the full lifespan of it because it seems like a really practical budge proof product. This was certainly not an even way for me to do this, but I just wanted to get my fingers on this stuff um, so I could show you. All right, let's do the glitter next. This is gonna be really exciting. And of course, it's got a little Jack Skellington on the top, so adorable. And um, I, I did enjoy the addition of having like a translucent frosted glass. So it's plastic, so this is plastic, and it's frosted, but it's not, um, how do I say this? It's translucent jelly finish, like it's a black finish, but it's not frosted. So you can see through it and it's not, it doesn't have that like obscure scratched quality, you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm making sense. I'm just gonna show you. Okay, you can see straight through to the glitter inside. It's not frosted, but it is tinted. Is that the phrase I'm looking for, tinted? God, I'm an English teacher. I should be able to explain things reasonably. Um, disappointed, but not surprised that the glitters inside are just normal shaped glitters. There's nothing super fancy about them, but boy, do they make your eyes shine. Boy, do they make you shine. They shine quite brilliantly. And I'm putting them really, really high up. <laughs> if you can see, um, I'm putting them quite high up on the brow bone area because, you know, we don't want our eyes and our retinas to be damaged by glitter. I don't want to lose my vision because I wanted to put some glitter on my face, but I didn't want you to see a demonstration of the glitter. Practically speaking, that's where most people are going to be applying the glitter, even though it's not recommended. Have you seen this, um, this page on your For You or your Instagram page where, uh, your home screen where the people have these, like, huge chunks of glitters that look like straight up sequins and they're applying them right down close to the eyes in the inner corner right on the lash line and I'm like oh are you advertising that because I don't think you should so we're not advertising the glitter on the eyes I'm just saying that if you're going to do it do it really really far from your your eyeballs please please I'm putting it right near my brow bone and I have high hopes for these liquid liners okay because I heard makeup just for fun uh talk about how these liners are made in Korea and they have a much more opaque and creamy feel to them which I'm dying to hear because I've never tried a ColourPop liquid liner I really stick to the products that I know are hits because <laughs> I'm childish like this all right let's do a blind test because I've never seen this before so Ooh, yeah, that's real white. That's real white and real pigmented. Okay, that was the Jack Skellington one, I believe. Oh, actually, I don't know which one that one. This one is Pumpkin King. Yeah, the Jack Skellington one and the Sally one. I wish I could have done a blue, but it's just a really nice pigmented black. And these are felt tip markers. They're not brush tip. So um, do be wary of how much pressure you're using on them because if the pressure is too much, what can happen is they just end up kind of bending and, and cracking in a way that is not super conducive to long-term use. So I would like to see, can I do a little graphic moment on top of whatever I have here? I'm gonna zoom you guys in. Again, please be nice. Um, this makeup has been on my face since 5 a.m. But I just wanna test the ability of this product. So um, let me just get my little, let me just get my little mirror out. I can use this. Okay. So it does work, it does work. It's not as, I don't know, there's something about um, probably the felt tip liner that I'm not obsessed with because it doesn't flow super easily, it doesn't bend really well. And it's starting to get some of those little, I don't know if you can see those rough edges and I don't usually get those rough edges. I'm trying to go over a dark eye. So lots of different reasons why this may not be immediately like super exciting. 
Yeah, the white is definitely picking up on the grays that are on my eyes right now. So after having done both eyes, <laughs> I want to report the status of the brush tip. It's definitely already very damaged. It's very gray, um, not doing super hot. Let me see if I can load some of the pure white pigment out. Yeah, and now all the white pigment has turned kind of grayish. Okay, noted. So maybe this is a message for me in terms of white eyeliner because I've never used white eyeliner before. I'm not familiar with it. So I don't want to say that this is a bad white liner. I just, I've heard from folks that um, the Korean formula is a, a new and improved one. Okay, let's try the black one. I'm gonna just fill in the line <laughs> exactly where the Jelly Much shadow was. Yeah, I think this one is definitely smoother. Definitely smoother. It traveled right across without having any issues of the lower line being skippy. Could have just been the white. Could have been the fact that it was picking up other colors. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I don't know what this shape was. I don't like it. Um, I'm going to take this off anyway because I have to swatch the eyeshadows. Let's just swatch them on my face because i got to take them off. Anyway, uh, I did not invent this idea. I've seen it on Wayne Goss. I've seen it on Shay. Is that her name? That, that girl Shay XO. But I just want to <laughs> I just want to get this on my face because I'm going to have to take everything off anyway. So we're going to start with Zero. Zero is, of course, a brilliant, brilliant metallic white. I mean, this is the whitest white I've ever used in my life. Okay. Brilliant. Meant to be kind of a cool toned taupe gray. Dear friend, which I just destroyed. It had a beautiful little imprint, but I really love this murky grayish tone. In my bones, a dark gray, darker Finkelstein purple. Okay. Ooh. Okay, I like the gray tone so far. The purple, is it Dr. Finkelstein or Finkelstein? I don't remember. Frog's Breath, Christmas Town. Pumpkin patch, which again, just like everyone else, I feel like the pumpkin patch color didn't really need to be here, but it's a pretty one. The pink one, which I feel like we already got in the super shock, so I feel like it was redundant here. I would have liked a blue. And this duochrome, which is very, very pretty. All right, on the other side, we've got, what's this? What's this? There's magic in the air, what's this? Da, 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 da. Okay, sorry. What's this? Santa Claus, everybody scream, which I love. Um, and Halloween Town, which is really similar to this uh, Jelly Much Shadow. Don't worry, I don't think the Jelly Much Shadow is going to transfer because it has already dried and um, completely become irrelevant. There's a lot of that like hot pink color. Okay, so here's initially right off the bat, of course, we know ColourPop quality. Um, no concerns about quality here. You know, everything is nice and pigmented. But do you see how there's redundancy? So that's one thing that I'm noticing. Like, this color is redundant because we've got it here. So I wish they did maybe a purple, like a really, really dark purple instead, or a navy, like a true navy, because this is a black with blue micro shimmer. And I would have preferred just a real kind of Sally or like that color of the sky. You know, that like really classic, you know, picture of them like on the hill. I really wish they had like that kind of color. You've got this pink, not once, but twice, three times. Four times, including this. Like, why in this collection is there four iterations of the same hot pink? I don't know. Um, the orange I like because it's like, is it a Halloween movie? Is it a Christmas movie? But why is there no true red? Why is there no true red? Like, they could have changed this one to this one, right? Wouldn't that have been, like, because Jack's Santa outfit? Or, like, Oogie Boogie Green? Um, it's criminal that Oogie Boogie is on the packaging in his beautiful, bright fluorescent green, and he's not in the palette at all. Yeah, he's not in here at all, and I wish they maybe have gone in this direction. Like, they even included blues and greens and neons and all these different colors, but didn't put it in the actual, um, color scheme. So on here, you can actually see a green and a lilac, um, or like a periwinkle color. On Sally's dress, there's like a mustard. I mean, they did all the things in terms of the packaging, and then in terms of what they gave us, it was very... I don't know, redundant is the word that I'm going to use. It's not even like there's a huge difference between these colors. Okay, I'm going to go take everything off. Um, we will come back. I'm going to try to do a full face with the collection, um, with what I can use. And of course, we're going to use everything all over the face. I am so excited. I could not be more enthralled so far. I mean, obviously, I had some constructive criticism in terms of what I would have liked to see. But in terms of what we did get, I'm very, very hopeful and excited. Let me, um, well, it'll be a snap for you, but let me take everything off and then I'll be back. Okay, so as much as you just heard me say, I wish it was this, that, and the other, you know, regarding this collection. I wish they had different colors. I wish they did, I don't know, a million different things differently. I still will say that I think the collection is beautiful. Um, obviously, I didn't get the lipsticks because I just wasn't interested in lipsticks <laughs> during a season in life where we are still very much so wearing masks to go out and about. It just wasn't something that intrigued me um, or felt like it was a good use of my money. 
what I'm leaning towards is kind of like a look um, and then transitioning that into a nighttime version because that usually is like the easiest thing to work with in terms of practicality. I'm gonna get my brows sorted and then we'll be back. Okay, so I've got the base for my brows done. Granted, you guys know my struggle with my brows right now. I've shaved them off um, to make more room and I don't really know what I wanna do. I have a hard time filling them in now that they're all shaved. Um, and they look blocky and they look terrible, but I just, I'm really trying to convey to you guys <laughs> not my absolute skill in makeup, but how one might transition this from day to night in a way that is gestural and easy. Again, this is my first impressions. You're going to see a lot more of this because I think it's going to be a fairly flexible and versatile palette. Um, but let us start um, where I think we might all be inclined to start, which is with a neutral transition shade. And that one here is called Meant to Be. It's kind of your mid-toned gray shade. So I'm going to take Meant to Be and I'm just going to pack it into the regular, regular schmegular crease and taking a clean brush, or I guess a brush loaded with the, with the product, blending it out towards the edges of my brow bone. And I don't want this to be super layered on thick because I kind of have an idea of what I want to do after that and it involves a fair amount of warmth. But so far, a very appropriate color, very like skeleton, very nice. I'm doing a frosty brow bone highlight, which I have unironically been into again. I've been very, very into this frosty, frosty brow highlight that was in in the 2000s and then we got out of it and we were like, ew, that's disgusting. It's so awkward. Why would we do that? And now I'm like reliving that fantasy again. Um, oh, it's giving me that like early 2000s grunge vibe. Yeah, I think, is that what it is? With like the thin brows? It's like a very 90s look. I'm into it. And I'm even into this dead socket look, which I usually never do. I'm going to take the same color, swirl it on my brush, go under the lash line. This is a bit of a powdery shade meant to be, I'm going to be honest. Uh... Not the most pigmented. I feel like the one in the Smoke Show palette is a little bit better, but I'm not gonna complain. We're gonna go into Dear Friend, which is that warmer color right next door. And it's kind of got that interesting plummy purple quality. Okay, so we've got a very cute like undead look going on right now. I'm obsessed. Now the question is, what color do we wanna make this in terms of like a full situation? I've been fine to maybe pop into barrels, a uh, little super shock just so I can transition this to day, from day to night because I'm worried that if we make this too dark now there's just going to be no transition so let's take barrel on the fingers tap that onto the eyelids yeah that's cute and remember you can do this like pop of color with any color so it could be the barrel color it could be the pink color the shock color it could be the um the lock color which is that really dark color and you would have a really beautiful grungy smoky eye so this is kind of like the most bare bones version of what I might do wearing this palette is that a lot? Is that is that a lot? Is that saying a lot about me? Because I think this is the lightest I would go in terms of like a daily look. Pop that inner corner color. Oh yeah, that frosty inner corner. We're bringing back all the 2000s vibes. Yeah, I think this is like as light and airy as I would go, frankly speaking. You could go darker. We could certainly use the In My Bones mixed with that little, like that darker color Halloween Town. It's a satin, so you would have to kind of like, you know, be aware that you'd be using a little bit more shimmer. Um, but I would feel very comfortable adding that in this outer crease as well. And then in terms of cheek colors, I kind of want to do, I don't know, part of me is really intrigued by that dear friend color, this murky color, because, I don't know, it's got that purplish quality. Yeah, I want to use that on the cheeks. I want to use it on the cheeks. And I'm going to be very, very sparing with it, because I think it could look very, very sickly, quickly. But I'm just going to kind of ever so slightly apply it almost like a contour just like in the areas of the cheeks where one may contour and it is do you see how it's giving me a little rosiness yeah I knew it I knew it had a little bit of that like berry rosiness in it and then of course if you were of a darker complexion this would be a really easy kind of like pop of color because I can't wear that straight on I'm gonna mix um probably that Santa Claus color with the pumpkin patch color which is that weak weak sauce uh gold but in this instance, it is going to help me soften the color. And I'm not using a very precise brush. Um, if I had more foresight, I would use a more precise brush. And the fact that it's a glitter is going to help diffuse it a little bit. It's not a glitter, shall I say. It's a, it's a metallic. Um, but the fact that it's a metallic is going to soften the finish. And the fact that it's a, a warm gold is going to also neutralize some of that bright fuchsia that we had going on. Okay, so that's a blush. Fabulous. I like that. And then for lip color, I mean, we have to do the Santa Claus. Sorry, no. What's this? Which is that bright orange. 
Um, but before we go in, I always recommend starting with a lip balm that's not super balmy. This is the EOS lip balm. It is a pretty dry formula, um, and it works really good for clinging onto lip color. And also, just to be safe, I'm going to use two fingers, a load up on two fingers. This definitely feels like a pressed pigment and not like an eyeshadow, because you can tell from how it flakes. Okay, a much more wearable color than I thought it was going to be. It's not my favorite color just because I have um, cool toned hair and this is a very orangey color. If I mix in Everybody Scream, we get a little bit more of a neutralized color and I think that's gonna be pretty cool as well. Okay, and that has certainly gone a little bit patchy because I went a little bit overboard, but if you went in with a little bit of gloss and you did it in one sitting, I don't think it would come off super weird. Okay, yeah, so that's with a little bit of gloss. Again, um, texture can hide a multitude of sins, and I think this color is much more harmonious with the cool-toned eye and the potentially more neutral lip. Okay, I wanna get into potentially, how many has can I say potential, potentially changing the eye to be a little bit more nighttime appropriate, like more lively, shall we say. Um, and I really wanted to do it with that orange, so I'm gonna go straight into what's this, which is bright, bright orange, and I'm just gonna start packing that on as the transition shade. I wanted this to be the primary transition shade. And because I'm building on top of a previous look, it's not gonna be as intense. And of course you can up the intensity by using a colored base, a white base, a sticky glitter glue, what have you. I mean, there's a million and one ways to make your eyeshadows more intense. But for my purposes, my intensive purposes, I feel like this is fine. I would have liked it a little bit more intense, but maybe I can do that next time. Getting it really, really high up the brow. And this is reminding me a little bit of the Moonspell 2 palette where the pigment in this color as well as the color in that palette, which is the red, the bright red, it's not sticking to the eyes super well. It doesn't have that cohesion, that creaminess, because one, it's a matte, and two, I think these really bright, shocking colors are quite hard to formulate. Um, I'm gonna go into the Sandy Claws color, which is the neon pink. Same issue, like the formula is a little bit crumbly, a little bit pastel. It feels a little bit like sidewalk chalk. Um, but overall the pigmentation is pretty good. Let's keep going. You know, as much as I'm saying it's a little bit chalky, it's a little bit dusty, my Gucci palette felt exactly the same way. They have a, a really beautiful kind of soft periwinkle shade in there, and that periwinkle shade applies just like this. Um, and I feel like it wears off by the end of your look, just like this. <laughs> I'm assuming that it's gonna kind of wear off and look a little bit less shocking as we build through the look. Um, and for $22, I can, you know, let that slide and I can say, listen, it is what it is. This is more of a novelty thing. But for $150, um, I was returning that palette, you know. So that was the issue with the Gucci palette. All right, going in now into Halloween time, which is that dark shade. And I think I'm going to apply it in the outer corner again, like we did last time. But I'm prepared to... See, this is the thing. I could have I could have achieved the same look with the Jelly Mush shadows. I could have done the same exact thing with the Jelly Mush shadows. I don't know why they overlapped in the way that they did. Because it just seems like, what is the point now? Because you've you've effectively lowered the creative potential of these, these things, even though you created more product, you know? Like, you, you created the Jelly Mush product for, you know, you decided to include it in this line. And what you included did not expand the amount of looks you could do. Does that make sense? Like, if you are going to keep the range very minimal, then I would understand you know, having repeat colors, whatever. But the fact is that they, they included more shades, they included more formulations, and in that, they somehow neglected the idea of wanting to expand what you can do. And so that just, that doesn't really click for me, but whatever, let's just use this on top as like a little bonus, just to kind of bring in a little extra sparkle, a little extra dimension. Um, and I think the eyeshadows work great as a base. I don't know what you're supposed to do. Like, so if you are familiar with the Jelly Mud shadows, do you use them underneath your other powder eyeshadows? Do you use them on top? I mean, the finish on these is so creamy and so beautiful, I would feel like it would be a waste to use them as a base. Um, but I'm not sure what the typical procedure is for this kind of thing. Yeah, unfortunately my lock is definitely very, very dried up. Um, it's like hard and almost like when I touch it, it's like silly putty. Like it feels exactly like a semi-dried up silly putty where it's, um, it's not really budging. All right, and I forgot that I gotta blend these out pretty quickly. So let's kind of get that buffed out. And the fact that mine is dry has made this way worse. Okay, mine is not blending anymore. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see, but there's a definite line of delineation right here because um, mine has dried and will not budge. So we're gonna have to do the edge outer corner with eyeshadow. Okay, so that, that's as good as I can do on the outer corner. 
Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry that um, this wasn't the best formulation uh, display of the formulation just because mine is not in ideal condition. Ideally, I would like some time to blend this out before it sets, you know, but this is just so dry that as soon as it gets onto the skin and it kind of leaves, there's nothing I can do to kind of buff it out or blend it. Yeah, it is what it is. So that's the position that I got it in before I could blend it out. Granted, it's not terrible. Like if I don't move too much, it's like, okay, yeah, that could be a cute look. Um, if you don't look too closely. And if I was just walking past you on the street and you, <laughs> you didn't take me to be someone who could give makeup advice, that would be fine. Um, let's do something bright on the lower lash line. I'm thinking maybe the purple color on the lower lash line. And then now I'm wondering, you know, can I use these as a base? Let's try, see, the other thing I don't understand is the pink face is on the black one, the green face is on the pink one, and the purple face is on the green one. Why did they do that? That is so confusing to me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use this as an eyeshadow base. We're gonna see if it works, because this one is nice and wet. Ah, really fast, okay, applied that one. Let's go into Dr. Finkelstein, right on top. Okay, I think that worked, I think that worked. Let's try it again on the left eye, picking up a little bit, rubbing on the eye. Oh, yeah, mine is crumbly already. Yeah, these are these are kind of dried out, but they're so pretty. I wanna give them a chance. Going in with the purple. And here's my really casual, you know, everyday approachable look. Something you could do really simple, really quick before heading out to the grocery store, no big deal. Um, I feel like it is only appropriate that I go in with the black liquid liner from this company. So let's try, do I wanna do something graphic or do I wanna stick with what I know? I have a ton of fallout, just letting you know. There's a ton of fallout on my cheeks, but it could be because I did two looks in one and I wasn't very careful about being gentle. I'm doing like a big ass wing because why not? It's like the Nightmare Before Christmas collection. I think what I'm learning is I just don't like felt tip pens because they do tend to create that jagged edge way more than um, brush tip liners. And they're stiff, they're a little stiff. I don't really love how hard it is for me to get a line down. I mean, if you are someone who, you know, goes really slowly and deliberately, potentially having the skipping issue is not gonna be a problem because it's nice and firm, you have control, but it's kind of like typing, you know? Some keyboards have that really nice tactile feel, but then you can't type super fast. Um, I kind of feel that way with this liquid liner. Like it feels like I have a lot of control, but only when I'm going slowly and then when I go fast, it just doesn't work anymore. But this is what we've got so far. I'm not gonna do mascara, I'm not gonna do lashes and the eyeliner is god awful. But I hopefully was able to showcase um, a couple different looks, something that was a little bit lighter, something that's a little bit stronger, albeit definitely not blended because these uh, Jelly Much shadows, they freaking dried on me. Um, let's go back and highlight with a little bit more of that white color on the cheeks. Oh, I should not have done that, that's way too icy. But whatever, we did on one side, gotta do it on the other side. Let's do the nose. Okay, that actually isn't terrible on my nose, I think. Maybe I just, I probably just went in too hard on the right side. But anyway, this is the final look. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm mostly obsessed with the item itself. It's not really the look that it can get me um, because I I don't know. I mean, it's not a super practical palette. I'm going to be honest in terms of what I'm wearing every day. I mean, I could. I mean, I think maybe I'm looking at this as like a cohesive thing. Like I'm not going to be wearing a bright purple and blue and green and orange eyeshadow look all at once. True, but maybe there's something about like, I can do one wash of color, I can go like in this direction and maybe it would be a little bit more wearable. I have to play around with it a little bit more. I'm sure this is not the last time you'll be seeing this product on my channel because I love makeup, I love Get Ready With Me's. I'm likely going to do this again. Um, and of course, uh, not gonna put the glitter on my face because I don't want to suffer eye damage, corneal damage, but this is absolutely stunning. And someone suggested putting the devil's lettuce in here after you were done with the container and I thought, how? Brilliant, I think I may just do that. Um, so we're gonna have to get through this glitter one way or another. And maybe I will put it, sometimes what I do is I put it in my roots, like uh, on the day right before I need to shower, like to get my hair cleaned and stuff. And that's a real fun way to cover up your greasy hair, your mess, um, while still looking quite cute. Ugh, what the hell, why don't we just do it? The problem with this though, I was like, let me I just put it on as a highlight. But I think the issue with this as a highlight is that it has a purple base. Yeah, it has like a little bit of a darker base, so I'm worried that it's gonna not look so cute on the cheeks. 
but what you can do is kind of get the majority of that base off and just stick on the glitters with a finger or some other tool, <laughs> in my case a finger, and leaving the, the glitter gel on the hand and just lifting up the pieces of glitter that have a teeny bit of what is effectively adhesive. Okay, so that's my glitter face. <laughs> I'm feeling quite pleased with myself if you can't see it already. Um, and I'm wishing I didn't throw away my expired Sailor Moon glitters so I could have kept the containers. But anyway, that is this look, this first impressions. Play with me with this collection. I feel like this was really fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love you. And um, I'm going to go contact ColourPop about replacing these shadows. I love you. Um, I said that already. <laughs> I will see you again very soon. Bye now.